At about 2.15 this afternoon, the heavily ornate carven door of the grand jury room swung open, and a slight, meek-looking man stepped out, removed his eyeglasses, polished them, and then, as if noticing her for the first time, walked over to a lovely, sad-faced young woman who rose from her chair, saying... Oh, Mr. Jackson, I didn't think you were ever going to come out of that grand jury room. Well, it's, it's been less than an hour, Mrs. McKean, and you, you might as well sit down again. Why? Oh, there's been no... Decision... Not yet. The grand jury just retired to vote on your indictment. Oh. There's not much doubt in your mind, is there, Mr. Jackson? As to your being indicted, I, I'm afraid not. Funny, isn't it? What, Mrs. McKean? Oh, a person's mind, the human mind. Oh. You can tell me the same thing over and over, as Mr. Mason told me over and over. If you're arrested, you'll be indicted for kidnapping your child. If you're arrested, you'll be indicted. And I heard what he said, Mr. Jackson. I believed him. And yet... Somehow I couldn't realize what he meant. It, well, it, it's like we all know we're going to die. And yet none of us can conceive it's happening to... What happened? In the grand jury room? Yes. Mrs. Wren testified and Sergeant Barker and B.H. Murtaugh. Of course. They introduced a copy of the court order awarding the custody of David Jr. to Mrs. Wren. Mm. It appears Mr. Murtaugh has had himself appointed special prosecutor in your case. Oh? Huh? That's bad, isn't it? If I have to conduct your defense... Now, Mr. Jackson, don't you worry. But I do. It's it's my nature, I guess. I, I'm not a trial lawyer. My function's to prepare cases, not try them. Mr. Mason's the trial lawyer. But you'll have to put up with me until Mr. Mason feels the time has come to appear. Uh, now, I think I'd better get back in. I want to be on hand when the grand jury does render a decision. Now, if you are indicted... When? Well, then when you are indicted, I, I shall request that the date of the trial be postponed. I see. Uh, you you won't mind waiting here alone? Alone? Oh, oh, you mean the guard. I'm sorry about that guard, Mrs. McKean, but they refuse to parole you into my custody. You'll have to go back to your cell as soon as the grand jury hands down its ruling. That's all right, Mr. Jackson. You don't write the laws. And too bad that I don't, too. There are a few I could improve on. I'm sure. Well, then you'll excuse me? Of course. Oh. Lumsy. Oh, oh, excuse me, Mrs. Wren. Oh. Well, Mary. Hello, Liz. Quite interesting grand jury proceedings. And very careless of the police, leaving you in this anteroom unattended. I'd hardly say I was unattended. Hmm? Oh, oh, there's a guard outside the door. Well, I'm glad there's some justice left in the world. If there's any justice left, you... I hope they won't shilly-shally around too much. I do want to stay and hear their decision, but I shan't stay if they take too long. I uh, have to take my precious nephew for an airing. I do think a child should have his afternoon airing, even in weather like this. As David Jr.'s mother, I hope you approve. You're very sure of yourself, aren't you, Liz? And why not? I don't wish to seem unkind, Mary, but one may as well be practical. You and Mr. Mason managed to get away with a great, great deal. But as mother used to say, this time you've bitten off more than you can chew. I imagine it will choke you. And I'll be there to watch you hear me, Mary? Did you hear me? I'm not deaf. Then you know what... What you are? Yes. I mean... That you hate me? Hate me as you hated my husband, your brother? Oh, yes. And as I know, you must hate my baby, too. Well, we're alone, except for the guard at the door, and he can't hear you. You're free to tell the truth. For once, you can stop being a hypocrite. You hated your brother from the time he was born, and later, later in life, you hated everything that belonged to him, me, his wife, and now his baby. I never said I hated my nephew. You never said. You never said. The only reason you fought so hard for that child, the only reason you framed me and took him away from me, is so you could control his money. Well? Well, this. Maybe you'll be able to carry it off. Maybe in spite of everything Mr. Mason can do, you'll be able to send me to prison for ten years. Maybe you'll be able to keep my boy away from me forever. I'll make him hate you. I'll teach Perhaps him. Perhaps you will. I'll make him loathe the sound of your name. The sound of your name and the sound of his father's name. I think you're mad. I'll make him cringe and beg me to change his name from David McKean Jr. to anything else. I know you're mad. That's what's in store for your child, Mary McKean. You must be mad. Aren't you worried? Aren't you afraid? 
Aren't you bothered about what I'm going to do to your child? Aren't you going to beg I me? I would if I thought it would do any good, but I know it won't. And so instead, I'm going to say what I've started to say. I wouldn't change places with you for anything in this world. Well... And you know why? Because you're being eaten up, Liz. Eaten alive with your own hatred. I don't know why I never saw it before. Perhaps because you kept it too well concealed. They may send me to prison, Liz, but no judge or jury could ever sentence me to the torment you're inflicting on yourself right this moment. Of all... Because that's what it is, torment. I can see it in your eyes, in your body. I wonder how you can live with yourself, money or no money. Knowing what you are, knowing what you've done. What I am. I like what I am and what I've done. And when I'm through, you won't like what you see. Because after you're convicted, after you've gone to prison, I expect to mold my precious nephew as I'd like to see him molded. And your ideas and mine aren't quite the same. Oh, Mr. Jackson. Uh, has the... Verdict and brought in? I suggest you consult with Mr. Murtaugh, Mrs. Wren. Thank you. I shall. Goodbye, Mary. Mr. Jackson? It's, it's what we expected, Mrs. McKean. An indictment? Yes. But at least we'll have time. You secured enough time. Oh, Mr. Jackson, if you'd heard the plans that that woman has for my child, you... Mr. Mason has to have time to get... Yes, that, that's the unfortunate part, Mrs. McKean. Mr. Murtaugh and the district attorney are in a great hurry to get on. They, they brought a great deal of pressure to bear. The trial date has been set for next Wednesday. Oh, next Wednesday? Yes. But we... No, 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 there, now, you mustn't be upset. I'll do the very best I can for you, Mrs. McKean, the very best I can. Don't be upset, says Mr. Jackson. Don't be upset. Well, how would you feel if you were in Mary's shoes? How would you feel if a woman like Liz Wren had control of your child and apparently there was nothing you could do about it? Well, think that over. Right now, it's some hours later. Are you sure you understood Paul correctly, Baggage? Absolutely, Chief. He said it wasn't possible to get things ready before Wednesday. It's not very fast work. What's holding things up? Well, according to Paul, the trucks and the scenery wouldn't be free until Wednesday and there's nothing anyone can do about it. He knows how vital time is. Well, I guess we'd better get back to our hideout. Mm. No good in being picked up before we get a chance to put our plan into action. Well, if you feel that way about it, the traffic light is red. Yes. Uh, paper, thanks for telling me. Paper, Wednesday. Paper, paper, paper mister? Uh, pa yeah, I guess so. You got a record? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Here you are, then. Just a second. I gotta find some change. All right, skip it. Oh, thanks. Say, don't I know you? I doubt it, unless you've lived in Arizona. No, I've never been out of New York in my life. Uh, I guess you look like somebody else, huh? I guess. A light's changing. Yeah, I better get out of the street. Well, let that be a lesson. Don't attract attention by handing out big tips. Yeah. And hand me the paper. Mary's been indicted. Well, we expected that. Oh, but even so. Oh, this picture of her leaving the court with Jackson. Chief, she looks awful. It couldn't have been a shock. If I know Jackson, he primed her to expect the worst. Trial date set. I'll have to look. Probably at the end of the story. Wait a minute. It says turn to page six. I'll turn to page six. I hope Jackson got us enough time. Oh. Well? Chief, it says Wednesday. What? This Wednesday? Yes, that's what it says. Wednesday of this week, day after tomorrow. And Murtaugh's been appointed special prosecutor. Chief, they can't do that. Read it to me. Uh, despite the pleas of Warren Jackson, who asked for a postponement on grounds of insufficient time to prepare his case, Judge Albert upheld the request of special prosecutor Murtaugh that the trial be opened on Wednesday of this week. Oh, so that's the way they're going to play it. It gives us two days. Just two days. Well, Jackson will have to start the case, that's all. Maybe he can get a postponement from the trial judge or stall the jury selection. Do you think so? Well, I know he'll do his best. Meanwhile, we can't get to work until Wednesday. But when we get started, when we get started... Or should you say, if you get started, Mr. Mason. But more of that tomorrow. Say, haven't you often thought dishwashing could use a miracle? Well, the miracle is here. It's Procter & Gamble's Amazing Tide. Tide washes dishes cleaner than any soap made. Yes, and Tide cuts grease better than any soap made. Seems to make it disappear completely. Yes, ma'am, Tide combines everything you've always wanted in a dishwashing product. More suds, faster suds. Suds that are kind to your hands. Suds that look and feel entirely different. Oh, how much pleasanter and easier dishwashing is with Tide. 
Because Tide forms no scum in the water, leaves no greasy ring round the pan, no cloudy film on dishes and glasses. They rinse and dry, sparkling clear, even without wiping. And say, if you have hard water, Tide is a dream come true. Gives oceans of long-lasting suds, even in hardest water. Try Tide today. There's never been anything like it. 